What is going on, everyone? Hope you all had a fantastic weekend. I had a great one myself. Got a little weekend holiday getting away. And uh, last night, we had the big RX Vega announcement that I wanted to talk to you about here today. We've got the specs and all of the RX Vega cards, the pricing, all of that, which is going to be releasing in a couple of weeks. So really excited to finally be talking about this and having all of the official specs and pricing. And I wanted to give you my opinion on, you know, what I'm seeing here and the type of performance maybe we could expect to get out of RX Vega now that we have all of the specs right in front of us that we can analyze. And I look forward to your feedback down in the comments below as well. So let's start off with what cards are actually going to be available. So we've got the RX Vega 64, which is really the, the top end skew in the Vega stack, but it does have a few different versions. It's got the standard RX Vega 64, which has a, a cooler and a shroud, very similar, if not identical to that of the RX 500 series and the 400 series. Well, the 500 series didn't really get reference card, but the 400 series, yeah, the 400 series of cards, this is where they kind of introduced that. It's basically identical to that, really no changes there. That was not a great cooler. It didn't cool those cards really well. They got rather hot and you really needed to, you know, rely on add-in board partner cards. Thankfully, with Vega, we will be seeing add-in board partner cards. It's not going to be like the Fury X where we didn't get any AIB cards from partners like Asus, Gigabyte, MSI, so on and so forth, Power Color. Um, so yeah, we got the we're gonna get add and board partner cards for these, and that's what I would advise most people to probably wait for. I mean, if you can't wait and you want to get these right away, then you can go out obviously and get the RX Vega 64 card. It's gonna have a 1247 base clock and a boost clock of 1546. Now, they've also got the limited edition, which is going to have a brushed aluminum shroud, but I believe the cooler is pretty much going to be the same besides the appearance of the shroud, and it's not something I would want to, you know, throw any extra money or, or time trying to track one of those down, honestly. I would still rather have an add-in board partner card. Now, at the top of the RX Vega 64 stack, we've got the liquid edition, which is going to be priced more. The 64s are going to be at $4.99, but if you want to get the liquid edition, it will cost you $5.99, and it does come with a built-in liquid cooler, but more importantly, the spec here I want to look at is the boost clock of 1677 megahertz and the base of 1406, so this is going to be clocked a fair amount higher than just the base reference designs that are going to run on air, and I think that is really telling of the type of performance we could expect to see out of the RX Vegas 64 graphics cards. The reason being is that because the RX Vega 64s are going to be the same GPU. So seeing that the liquid cooled version is going to be a boost clock of 1677, I would say that that is a fair estimate of where we could expect really any RX Vega 64 card to hit if it is cooled well enough and it's not being throttled because of temperatures or anything like that. So if you have a good cooler on there, I'm hoping that with manual overclocking, we'll be able to get these cards up above 1650 megahertz and at least at 1677 megahertz if that's the boost clock because usually you can manually overclock it even beyond the boost clock of a graphics card. So seeing it hitting 1677 on a reference liquid design from AMD would tell me that if we get a nice cooled card from an add-in board partner like Asus, we already have some tease cards over here on videocards.com where we could see a couple of cards, the RX Vega 64 8 gigabyte Raj Strix Gaming and the Raj Strix Gaming OC, which has not listed their base or their boost clock yet for those variants. But like I said, I'm having to assume if they're getting it on liquid up to 1677 is just a boost clock, an enthusiast that picks up one of these cards and overclocks it themselves with a nice add-in board partner that has a custom cooler on there, or maybe even picks up a reference design and does their own custom loop, then I'm thinking these cards are going to overclock really well, or well not well, yeah, really well based off of the 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 reference model, I should say, which only has a boost clock of 1546. So if you can get those up by an extra 100 megahertz or more, I think you're going to be golden. Um, Dude Random, which is a YouTuber who likes doing the whole side by side comparisons, very similar to the way that I do them. He's been doing a lot of content on Vega Frontier Edition um, over the past month or so, comparing it with the likes of the GTX 1080 and the 1080 Ti. And I have a couple of selections here that I wanted to show to you. If I'll link to them down in the description below if you guys want to go and check out the full videos. But in this one right here, we could see Battlefield 1 is, you know, running and we could see most of the time here, the Vega Frontier Edition is beating out the GTX 1080 or really tying it. They're very neck and neck. But the important thing is that you can see the clock speed on the GPU is only 1440 megahertz the majority of the time. Every once in a while, it will boost up to 1528, but for the most part, it's sitting around 1440 megahertz in this game. 
That is also the same true for uh, Resident Evil 7. Most of the time it's around 1440 megahertz. So with the boost clock on that liquid card being up near 1700 megahertz, I would say that this is going to be a fair bit faster than the GTX 1080 showed in this comparison here by Dude Random. Now the 1080 is also not overclocked, so that could be overclocked quite a bit. It's sitting at 1835 megahertz. You would expect to get it around 2 gigahertz to 2.1. So all that taken into account, I would say Vega Frontier Edition overclocked is probably going to get pretty close to or beating out a GTX 1080 when overclocked as well. So I think we're going to have a fair amount of headroom on top of the reference cards if you are patient and wait for an add-in board partner or get, you know, a nice sample on the reference cards. Although temperatures, you know, may come into play there. Looking at the TDP over on Tech Power Up's GPU database, they have right now listed at 295 watt TDP on the Vega 64 card. Now the liquid cooled card is rumored to be around 400 watts, I believe, but that all that extra power consumption is really coming from the pump for the liquid cooler. So it's not something that really concerns me because it's going into really giving you better performance out of the card. And then outside of RX Vega 64, we've also got the cut down version, which is the Vega 56, where they've got rid of a few cores. Some TMUs are lower as well, and the clock speeds are a bit lower than the Vega 64 edition. Those are going to be priced at $399. And AMD also decided to do what they're calling Radeon packs, which is going to be uh, kind of bundles really for these graphics cards. So you can get them with a couple of games. You get a discount off of a Samsung monitor, $200 discount off a Samsung FreeSync monitor, and $100 off of the Ryzen 1800X, which, you know, in, in and of itself is a nice little bundle. The RX Vega 56 will be priced at $499 with that bundle. So only $100 more, which is not too bad when you consider what you're getting along with that, with the monitor discount, two games that are going to be at $120, which is Prey and Wolfenstein 2, and then the discount on the 1800X and X370 motherboard combination. Then we've got the, that's the red pack. Then we've also got the black pack, which will be the RX Vega 64, which will either have the black shroud or the limited edition brushed aluminum one. And then we've got the Aqua, pa Aqua Pack, which will be the liquid cool version for six hundred ninety nine dollars. Now, the you know just because, just on its own, I guess it's it's cool seeing a pack like this. But the more important I think to discuss is why are they doing this? And I think it's going to be really interesting for with the whole Ethereum mining thing going on right now and cryptocurrency booming the way that it is. You know, I think this is going to make it so more gamers will be able to get their hands on these cards that actually want to use them for gaming. Hopefully this will deter miners going out to, from picking up these RX Vega cards and at least the ones that are coming with the gaming bundles unless they're willing to overpay, which they have proven in the past. They are willing to overpay for their graphics cards, but just how, you know, how well RX Vega is gonna perform as far as a mining card is greatly going to affect how much they're willing to shell out you know, for a given graphics card. If they can get the same performance with lower power consumption on another card, then they'll probably go that route. This is going to be quite a power-hungry card. It's going to require two 8-pin power connectors. So with all that taken, taken into account, how popular of a mining card it will be, we will just have to wait and find out, but not too much longer as we should expect to see these cards in the next couple of weeks. And then add-in board partner cards should be soon to follow right on after that but i'm gonna go ahead and get on out of here please let me know your thoughts down in the comments below on the pricing on this you know the, are you gonna pick up an rx vega are you gonna get the 64 or the 56 the liquid cooled version wait for an add and board partner card like i said if it was me and, and it was my money and i'm sitting there waiting to spend my money on an rx vega card i would wait for an add in board rx vega 64 card i think that's really going to be the best bang for the buck in this whole lineup but as always, yeah, I look forward to your comments down below and discussing this with everyone. I will be down there, uh, yeah, to, well, to discuss it, obviously. So I'm going to get on out of here. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like on it and subscribe if you are not already. And if you have been here for a while, you can always hit the notification bell to find out when I'm uploading new videos like this one. And I'll catch you guys next time. Tara.